My first EV was a plug-in hybrid, and after about 10 miles, I wanted to drive it on all electricity. So I immediately tried to figure out how to drive it more efficiently. And we're not talking about hybrids today. There's an entire ecosystem on how to drive a hybrid efficiently. Today, what we're going to talk about will work for every car, but especially for EVs. We're trying to get maximum range in our big battery EV. Let's drive more efficiently. You know me, no long intro. There are six keys to driving your EV with max efficiency. They are more space, gradual changes, max regen, avoid your brake pedal, plan your route, and make smarter interior choices. Let's talk about all those. And hi there, this is Voice Over Me. I'll be sarcastically reacting to myself throughout the video, for your entertainment, of course. But first, some don'ts. These are things you may or may not do, but we have all done them at one time or another. First, tailgating. And I already know people in the comments are going to say I should draft big trucks because I'll save a bunch of range, but it's not safe. It's true, drafting works, but we are playing it safe for this video. And for drafting really to work properly, you have to get so close to a truck that they can no longer see you, which means you have an unsafe following distance. What is following distance, you ask? Well, pick a stationary object, start counting when the car in front of you passes it, and the number of seconds it takes to get to your bumper is your following distance. And let's all guess together the age of this footage. 1970? 1980? I'm guessing it's digital because of that beautiful use of the building. Thanks, building. And my final answer is 1992, because it does seem better than the Dire Straits video from 1985, but the inspiration is there. And the other reason we don't tailgate other than safety is to avoid pressing the brake pedal. That's right, every time you brake, you have taken energy from the battery and spent it in the form of frictional heat to the wheels. Allowing more space or a longer following distance reduces the need for braking with the pedal. And when I say with the pedal, I'm also referring to the other way to brake, which is regenerative braking. And this is your best friend. We already said don't tailgate. Also, don't turn down the regen. Full disclosure, I've been using some AI generated images and I went kind of weird with this one just to see if it would work. I'm not being complex, but that's just making the AI more funny. Sometimes you don't catch it, but check this part out right here. Moving on. Some EVs offer levels of regen braking and to drive the most efficiently, you want to use regen braking to your advantage as much as possible. So if you've got settings, set it as high as you can, which often means one pedal driving or eye pedal driving or something of that nature. With Volkswagen, it's brake mode. So B instead of D. With Nissan, it's E step. And it's a one pedal setting on the Mustang Mach-E in the infotainment screen. You immediately might say, that's too much regen. But if it feels that way, then we need to adjust our driving to fix it. The accelerator pedal in every vehicle needs to be finessed to control acceleration. But now, with regen braking, you need to finesse it when you release it as well to control the amount of regen you apply. Finally, with regards to safety, the max level of regen braking will slow your car the maximum amount when you release the accelerator, which in the case of distracted driving that causes a lot of accidents, can increase your safety drastically as the vehicle begins to slow on its own. And this may feel weird at first, but trust me, it's the better way. This is the way. Because of regen braking, you don't need to release the accelerator in most situations, only when you need to come to a complete stop. And by using the accelerator in a more finessed way, you make it more comfortable for you and your passengers. Speaking of passengers, it's time to talk about speed. But this is more nuanced than you think. EVs are most efficient at lower speeds because it can recuperate almost 100% of the energy that you're providing to the wheels with regen braking. The best example is driving between lights in city traffic. And there's rules for that. To drive most efficiently, when you approach a light, reduce your application of the accelerator before you get close to it. Basically, treat it like it's yellow, and you aren't going to make it through. Come to a stop as slowly as you're comfortable with. This prevents you from applying the brake. Also, allow a slightly longer distance between you and the car in front of you, allowing you to start accelerating at the same time as them. Accelerate as slowly as you're comfortable with, within the traffic situation, as this uses the least amount of energy and increases your following distance as quickly as possible. In an EV, the amount of throttle you are applying or the amount of regen that is being applied is illustrated in one way or another. With the Tesla, it's this bar and it's black when energy is being used and it's green when regenerative braking is taking place. The smaller the bar is or the smaller amount of energy you're asking for, the more efficiently you're driving. Oh, and I'm still here. Here's me messing up the word regenerative. Generator, regenerative, when regenerator. Regener regenerative. This traffic light strategy makes you safer overall because you're not crowding the car in front of you. And by doing this, you're giving yourself an opportunity to escape. If there's an imminent threat of an accident behind you, 
or there's an emergency vehicle approaching and you need to make an evasive maneuver. Always allow an opportunity to escape. Also, if you approach every light like it's yellow, bringing your car to a stop more slowly, and anticipating that you know you'll need to stop, you'll actually find there are fewer instances in which you have to come to a complete stop. I like to play it as a game. Can I keep the car moving, slowing as slowly as possible, so the car in front of me starts moving before I come to a stop. This strategy will also make the riding experience more pleasant for your passengers, especially those who may be, I don't know, buried in a cell phone. It does tend to happen. A lot of the fundamentals of how you move along in traffic are determined by your personal sense of urgency. If you happen to be running late, you are much more likely to drive aggressively, allow less following distance, run lights, and allow less overall comfort for your passengers. So, the best way to drive the most efficiently is to be on time. Luckily, if you leave your house at the same time every day, you are much less likely to be late because you're low on fuel, since you charge at home overnight now in your EV. Another benefit of this traffic strategy is financial, as your brakes will last longer than they normally would with a traditional ICE vehicle because you no longer use them on a regular basis. Speaking Speaking of your passengers, one thing that uses a ton of energy is your HVAC. You want to be comfortable when you're driving, there's no question. But turning the climate one or two degrees lower when it's cold or one or two degrees warmer when it's hot can make a difference. Also, don't be afraid to precondition your vehicle. It allows you to take advantage of regen braking earlier in your drive and at a higher frequency because your battery is closer to its optimal temperature, allowing it to be able to absorb more energy from the brakes. This is a win-win because you get a cabin set to your preference and your battery gets to operate at a more efficient temperature. If you're driving under 45 miles an hour, you can lower the windows as there's not a whole lot of drag aerodynamically at that speed. And if you're by yourself traveling above 45 miles an hour, turning it off completely is expert mode, as you'll see a drastic increase in your range. Finally, on a kind of unrelated note, make sure you have your air set to fresh input from the outside, so you don't build up CO2 in your cabin. Yes, that's a thing. You'll find yourself less sleepy and able to drive longer distances. Ever drive behind an EV and feel like they're asleep at the wheel? Or just purposely driving under the speed limit so you can be late? They're not. It's just a responsible battery user driving the most efficiently. Are you one of those people or do you hate those people? Let me know in the comments. Now it's on to route planning. You wanna take the route where you're comfortable driving the slowest or there are the fewest number of miles, which for trips of modest distance are typically void of motorways. With this example, these two routes take about the same amount of time if you have to stop and charge on the quicker one. The GPS doesn't include that because I don't have the settings applied to include it. But if I take the highway, I will have to charge. But if I drive efficiently enough on the slower route, I won't for the round trip. 55 is pretty much the best speed for long distance travel. And as I said, 45 or lower, go ahead and roll the windows down if you're comfortable or the weather warrants it, as it doesn't have a huge effect on efficiency. But 55 can't be done on most long trips, so for any trip that's gonna require a charge or two, we have to take some additional steps. The best traveling speed for me, in my opinion, is 60 miles an hour. It's 9% more efficient than 70 miles an hour, and it doesn't feel like you're crawling along like 55 miles an hour does. Another good thing about 60 miles an hour is it doesn't give you the temptation to try to catch up with people. You're not going to catch anyone. People are going to pass you, but you're going fast enough to alert someone who's approaching you at a very high speed that you are not going at a high speed. But give them enough time to make that reaction and avoid you. If 60 miles an hour is too slow, my favorite speed on the highway is 65 miles per hour. But I'll admit it's very tough to drive at 65 miles an hour and not be tempted to try to stay up with traffic. So I always set some kind of cruise control in any vehicle I'm driving at 65 miles an hour. And if you think I'm crazy for driving so slow. 70 miles an hour is the maximum speed you want to drive at to drive efficiently because 80 is 25% more fuel than 70. If you're on a long trip and you're trying to save time, 80 miles an hour won't benefit you as much as you might think or it might feel like because you will have to charge more often and for longer. Conversely, this video is not regarding how to travel anywhere more quickly. It is almost the opposite. So if your goal is to get somewhere, quickly or in less time, none of these steps will assist you with that. Efficiency is the goal here and safety is a byproduct. Once you've gotten comfortable using these driving style adaptations, you will have become better than your driver assist features in traffic and in lower speed situations. So to maximize range, try not to use adaptive cruise in lower speed situations, unless you're not an efficient driver already, at which point using the adaptive cruise and setting the maximum distance for following could show an improvement in your efficiency, especially for lower speed applications. If 
If you think you can exercise a higher following distance and accelerate more lightly than your car's computer, it's best to go without, as it adds range. So, those are the tips I use to drive more efficiently. What strategies do you use? Let me know down in the comments. I do videos about EVs, especially the upcoming Fisker Ocean. Subscribe for more. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.